Hey guys, welcome to the very first tactics video for Gold Rush Battles. In this video, I'll go over some of the very basic stuff about playing the game. Let me know in the comments below if you find these helpful and I can make more of these and help you become stronger and win more battles. Now, if you don't already know, Gold Rush Battles is a card game that can be downloaded from the App Store on iPhone or Android. The game is built around upgrading your cards and unlocking new moves so that you can defeat other players for gold and trophies. Uh, gold is the basic currency of this game and everything revolves around getting more gold or taking it from others. <laughs> when you start the game for the first time, you're going to need to pick a faction you want to play for. So you can pick any side you like. They're pretty much the same. The difference between them is mostly cosmetic. So I'm going to go with... Darkness this time. I already have a light faction character on my other device, and I'm feeling like a bit of a badass right now, so I'm going to go ahead and choose Darkness and see how that plays out. As you can see on the account page, I got six cards for this faction, and each one of them it has an attack and a defense value that is shown right next to these little sword and shield icons on the card, and the middle one is the health. When attacking opponent cards, you're basically trying to take their health down to zero to DEFEAT THEM. The amount of damage you will do will depend on your attack value and your opponent's defense value. Let's talk about how to upgrade your cards, uh, make them stronger, and unlock some really cool moves that you can use. Uh, the way it works is that when you make attacks during battle, the card gains XP. And as it gains XP, it increases its level. And after 10 levels, it gets upgraded to the next tier. Each card starts with Tier 1. As you can see, it has just one star at the bottom and one bronze badge to the left top of the card, showing the very first tier that it started with. This is called Common Tier. But as you rank up, you get to Uncommon tier, rare, legendary, hero, myth, and the final tier is called god tier. Each card has three skills that unlock at tier 1, tier 5, and tier 7. Uh, most of the time, the best skill is at tier 7, or god tier. If I run into a guy with a bunch of god tier cards, I already know the result of the battle. <laughs> but I still try to finish the battle so that my cards can gain XP and at the very least will be stronger in the next battle. I don't feel salty about it because I know that the other guy probably worked to upgrade his cards and at the moment he is difficult to defeat. But I know that if I keep going, I will reach the same power level and hopefully run into him again and beat him. The game can get a little grindy at times, but once you level up and you can see those weak players trying to attack you and crumbling at your feet uh, while you gain free XP, gold, and trophies. I love seeing those inbox messages that so-and-so's attack was defeated. And I uh, just go like, oh yeah, eat it, buddy. <laughs> Each card plays a different role in the battle, so let me go over the cards to explain how they work. The first one here is my boss card, Dragonblade. And as you can see, he looks pretty badass with his fire sword. Uh, the boss is the main card, and the goal of the battle is to take down the opponent's boss card, but you can't attack the boss until the army is alive and surrounding it. So uh, let's check out how our army cards work now. This one here is called the Blocker card. His name is Gollum, and uh, his job is to be the main defender of our team. As you can see, he doesn't have a lot of attack power, so when we are attacking, he won't be that useful. But when an opponent is attacking us, you'll see that he'll be right there protecting the team. Uh, a lot of times people attack me, and they can't even go through my Blocker card, and that nets me some easy gold. Uh, this one right here is our defense card called Devastator. Uh, Devastator, as you can see, has a higher defense value, but he's not as weak as our blocker, Gollum. 
He can dish out some really cool attacks, and one of the things he's really good at is reducing defense power of enemies. So you can use him a few times on an opponent to reduce their defense, and then unleash your Spitfire to take them out in one or two shots. This is one of my favorite combo strategies, and I use it all the time to win battles. Next on our roster is the balance card Drogar. Drogar has a really cool backstory of being king of the mountains. And then later on, when Dragonblade showed up, he defeated him and took over. Now Drogar just follows him around like his personal guard. You can read all about these backstories in the account page by tapping on the card. Anyway, you can see Drogar has equal amount of attack and defense. So he is uh, useful when attacking or Defending. I love one of his tricks where he can convert his defense into attack, which makes for some interesting gameplay. We can talk about those advanced tactics in a future video. The next one in our team is an attacker card, and this one is called Spitfire, and he is a little dragon-like creature. Being an attack card, he has a higher attack power, but his defense is not the greatest, so we gotta think about using him with some of the other cards for him to be effective and not just get killed out there. Uh, once you upgrade him, he has some really cool moves or skills uh, where he can deal massive damage, so make sure you use him during attacks. Last but not least, we have Shaman. This is like a healer and an area of effect card. As you may have already noticed, only a boss can hit a boss card in general. But Shaman has an area of effect skill, so hitting someone close to a boss can result in some of the damage being dished out to the boss, even before the army is dead. This can be really useful when you are evenly matched with an opponent and thinking about how you're going to defeat their boss in the final phase of the battle. Because if bosses on both sides die, the battle is considered a defeat for both of the players. On higher tiers, Shaman can also heal and resurrect allies when you upgrade them. We could talk about that in a future Advanced Tactics video. Today, I just want to keep it short and sweet and go over the basics for you. Be sure to subscribe and smash that bell icon so you will be notified when I release it. Uh, in the meantime, stay frosty, and I will see you in battle.